Evening all. Now I'm very pleased with my new battery bank outside, those gel batteries, because now I've got 12.8 volts and it's night time, which means I can turn on this light, which hangs from my knotted curtains. And that means that I can do a what's in this box video. So uh, here's a box labelled electronics. Now I'm reliably informed that all the young women on YouTube are doing a video called What's in my handbag? Well I can't do that, but I can do a What's in this box. And what do we have here? Wow! Retro electronics! So this is very obviously a homebrew rat's nest wired Z80 microprocessor. There's the Z80 CPU. There's an EEPROM labelled CPU 08 B. Uh, next we have a 43256 which is a 32k uh, static RAM chip and an 8251 which is a UART. Now the Z80 required quite a lot of uh, support components so on the left is what's that an ALS 04 not quite sure why it's an ALS I probably had one kicking around. Now the crystal is a 4 meg, so that's a 4 meg clock for the Z80. Next in line there's an LS1 for hex Schmidt inverters and that's being used as a reset circuit with the button there. That's an LS245, that's a bi-directional data transceiver. Um, I think that was to buffer the data lines on the Z80 CPU. Not actually necessary but um, I did it anyway. I must have enjoyed running these wires. LS139 is a dual 2-bit uh, to 4-bit decoder, so that will be doing the address and I.O. decoding. Now, 5-volt regulator here. Uh, there's another LS04 with another crystal. Let's check the frequency. So that's a 2.4576 meg crystal, so that's doing the if you divide that down, which is what the next chip does, the LS393, it's just a big ripple counter, that's generating um, the board rate for the UART, which would have been something like uh, 2400 board, probably. Now this module up here uh, came from Maplin, and it is uh, featuring the LM1893 chip. And then some strange components, uh, two big class X capacitors, a little inductor with a tuning core, another class X capacitor there, the blue one, and a couple of opto isolators. And this is a data transceiver, which superimposes data onto the mains. So you can see there's a Euro connector up there. So the LM1893 is described as a carrier current transceiver uh, uses the power mains to transfer information between remote locations. Bipolar carrier current chip performs as a power line interface for half duplex bidirectional communication of serial bit streams of virtually any coding. So what happened here was Maplin published this project saying send data over the mains. Well I mean you know now you can send uh, high-speed Ethernet over the mains but this was quite revolutionary in its day and I thought that sounds like fun so I built a Z80 CPU to actually communicate with that thing and as I remember it this module sat in the garage with a, a big 100 watt light bulb and I sat in the house typed commands into my Z80 computer and the light would switch on and off at a remote location. So I've been rummaging around and I've actually found the uh, power supply that I used with this thing and I had to make sure it's the right one because uh, firstly it's got a 2.5 millimeter plug which are slightly unusual and the other thing is as I remember it this is center negative not center positive so I have to be careful not to blow this up but let's plug it in and that rather nice display lights up FF now if I press there's a LED there but Pressing reset doesn't appear to do anything, and it certainly doesn't do anything to that display. 
And in fact, all I've discovered I can do is change that from zero, zero to, if I leave it for a while, F, F, and that's all it does. Now, of course, I can't actually drive this thing because my old Z80 computer's in the shed, long since defunct. Maybe I'll get it out one day and see if I can power it up. I'm just loving these displays, so double magnifying glass over the camera lens to try and get in on that little chip. You can even see the wires on it going out to all the dots on the seven segments of the display. It's wonderful. Now I've even found CPU versions 1, 2, 8 on these fantastic old Toshiba 27256 EPROMs and you can see it actually even says their VPP the programming voltage is 12.5 volts so double magnifying glass again but uh, you can't really see any detail on the chip die because there are a lot of uh, memory locations there but uh, it's wonderful to see these old windowed EPROMs again and uh, back in the days of EEPROMs, of course you had to have this essential piece of equipment which is a EEPROM eraser. You can just see the ultraviolet light in there um, which is on a switch so that you can't get it in your eyes because ultraviolet's not good for your eyes they say. So that's the EEPROM eraser. You could get them with timers on but I didn't bother, I just set a, a timer separately. And uh, in another component drawer, I found some old Z80 CPUs. Uh, one at the top, Sharp Z80A. Z80A was 4 megs. There's a genuine original Zilog um, Z80A, 4 meg, an SGS. And this one is a Z80, not Z80A. So I've got a feeling that's 2.5 megs uh, maximum frequency. And uh, unlike modern microcontrollers, the Z80... Uh, didn't have any peripherals inside it. So if you wanted uh, parallel input and output ports, you needed a Z80 PIO. And if you wanted uh, counters and timers, you needed a Z80 CTC. And uh, of course, you're not a complete Z80 enthusiast unless you have an original Zilog Z80 CPU technical manual with all the uh, instructions and timing diagrams and so on. So, retro Z80 nostalgia or just a load of worthless old tut that I should have thrown away years ago? Well, that's going back in its box. And that's going back up on the shelf.